attractive. I, I've never been made more aware of it. it. It has been a long week, and that's uh, for Mary and for me. Uh, we've, uh, I have a dear friend who passed away at age 90, and the family asked me to come and participate in the funeral, and it wasn't next door. <laughs> it was in Winsboro, South Carolina. I don't know if any of you, uh, some of you Trevecca people and you loyal Nazarenes might know Moody Gunner and his wife, who was a general superintendent. It was their home church in Winsboro, uh, North Carolina. And so they asked me to come, and Mary didn't feel up to going. And so uh, my daughter Megan uh, volunteered to drive her old daddy uh, and my ears are tired. Uh, we, we talked. I have talked since uh, noon Wednesday for 18 hours. All the way there and all the way back. I took a pillow thinking maybe I'd get a wink of sleep and a little rest. Nope. Wasted the pillow. Did, didn't do it at all. Uh, and, and then uh, we, we went most of the way on Wednesday and got a motel, and uh, she didn't stop talking, and I don't either. And, and then got up and went on. And I have to say to you, it was really wonderful. It may have been the most important thing to spend this time with my daughter, who is 53 years old but still my little girl. It was actually wonderful. We talked about everything. We talked about her mother. Don't ask me to tell you what we said, but we did. We talked about everything. It was wonderful. We felt the presence of God. And uh, so she got me there. She drove every mile all the way there and all the way back, right through the mountains and the 18 wheelers and uh, all the way there, and the, the service was Friday at noon, and uh, of course that's Eastern time, and uh, we did the service and went to the grave site, and uh, and then drove all the way home and got back Friday night. So I'm running on something that's not human this morning, and I, I sense his presence. I thought I might tell you, I, I think the, the service and my part in it kind of uh, is a spinoff of, of, of some things that the Lord taught me from this dear brother. Uh, his name was Ray McKenzie. He was 90 years old. He served as a Sunday school superintendent in the church for 40-something years. And uh, somewhere here, if I can get back to him, I have a, a few notes that I wanted to share with you about, uh, about Ray. Uh, because he, he was one of the most Christian people I've ever met. Uh, no pastor could ever have a more loyal church member than Ray was. And uh, I learned some things from him. Uh, and this is not an afterthought. Over the years, I have always thought of this, and it's his input in my life. Uh, Ray, Ray was a listener. He would call me up and say, Brother Sproul, I need you to go with me somewhere to visit somebody. And we did that quite often. In fact, we had people at his funeral that Ray and I had visited and, and people that we got in the church that were unchurched. And they were there at his funeral and they're still in the church and serving God. And so, so I mentioned that Ray and I went to see Mike and Sue Black. Now, this is what I learned from, as they affectionately call him over there, Brother Ray. And I asked God to please help me with this because... One of the tendencies of a person who has a gift of teaching, and that 
you, you can't take no pride in that if God gifts you to teach, is you never know when to shut up. You, you always got something you want to say, something you want to teach, you know. It, it's, it's the negative side of the gift of teaching. And every gift have it, has its positive and negative. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm always thinking about truth and life and what matters. And, and it's always just brewing inside of me. So sometimes I need to shut up and listen. And, and Brother Ray, uh, what, when he was with you, he was always asking about your life and your children and your family. It was never about Ray McKenzie. And in that way, ever since, uh, his life has impacted my life because I've thought of that again and again and thought to myself, James, you need to just hush and listen and find out about him. I remember exactly what he said to me when I became their pastor. He said to me, now, Brother Sproul, I'm Sunday school superintendent, and I'll take care of the Sunday school. You don't need to worry about that. And he did. He was faithful for all those years. He was a team player. Now, I'm taking this somewhere. Just stay with me. He was loyal, and uh, everybody loved him, even even the children. The way I closed my part of the funeral was Megan told me on the way. She said, I remember when, Daddy, when I was just uh, like 11 years old, and we had big long tables and we were filling Christmas baskets with apples and oranges and candy and all that. And it was me and Brother A, just the two of us doing it. We were going around the table and said, uh, Ray McKenzie, Brother Ray said to me, Megan, just follow me. Just follow me. And I said to the people, it's the same thing Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. That if we, if they would just follow Brother Ray's example, they'd make it to heaven and, and see him again. It, it, was, it was really, a, it was really a, a wonderful experience to be with my daughter and to be with Ray again. And so in the light of what I've been thinking about, maybe this is a, a kickoff, I got to thinking about Brother Ray and all of our lives and the way we live our lives, that some of us are pluses, And some of us are minuses. I guess we're all a minus occasionally. But the goal of the Christian life is to be a plus. To live life as a plus. I, uh, when I think about Brother Ray and other people that I've known in life, when I've been around them to go away, is always a plus, a deposit. There are different ways of looking at a plus and a minus, you know. You can think of a, a, I hooked up a battery at home. It's on charge right now, and it has a a positive and a negative. I'm charging that battery. And thinking about our lives and the way we live our lives and how important it is uh, to become a plus in people's lives. I, I, I wish that God would so profoundly speak to my heart and to your heart that every one of us in Jason Chapel in this community, in people's minds and hearts, could become a plus. I don't know exactly what you would do with this thought, but I am... God has kind of pushed me in a corner with this whole idea that every day I want to end the day thinking that I've been a plus in somebody's life. It's an important question. I couldn't help but think about that about Brother Ray. I I was with him a lot. He was on the church board, of course, for all those years. He was a main leader. 
And I cannot remember one single time that I was ever in his presence that I didn't go away impressed that Ray McKenzie was a plus, never a negative. Now, I can't say that about everybody. And if I say some things, it won't be any, about anybody. It won't be anybody you would ever know or have known is in other states. When I think about people as a plus or a minus, I couldn't help but think about people in, in my life, and you will too, you know. I, I think about a school teacher. There's more a minus than a plus. <laughs> when you have a school teacher that makes you want to play hooky every day, that's a minus. <laughs> and, there, and then I think, I think about a teacher, Miss Bobo, sixth grade, who was the most wonderful person. I have no minus memory of her in my life. It was all a plus. It was all positive. Encouragement. Now think about other people. I think about a man. I think about a man that I gave a good bit of my life to when I was a pastor at another place at another time. And... uh, because he liked to hunt or fish, and uh, this this is that man. I rode in him with a truck as we go deer hunting. He was always criticizing, always negative. I remember one time we bought some paint to paint some walls in the church. And you know, I remember when you had to thin paint, but you don't thin paint anymore. You paint it on the, out of the bucket like it is. And I remember he just made a huge deal and took this paint and said, oh, it's got to be thinned, thinned, you know. And then you got to put another coat on it because he wouldn't listen to you. I mean, I'm telling you, he's a champion of minus. <laughs> now, there are minuses. Sin is a minus. Sin will take from you. Sin will rob you. Sin will, and evil will diminish your life. And we all have to deal with that issue. Do you realize that the cross is a plus? It's just got one longer section on it that's planted in the ground. And there's something in that too, but it's a plus. Jesus knew that sin and evil was a minus. It would take away. It would ruin your life. It will mess up your marriage. It will destroy your witness. It's always a minus. It will deceive you. And then rob, rob you. And Jesus knew that. So he came to our world and became a plus. He made a deposit in your behalf. There was a deposit in every person's behalf made by Jesus at his expense. And it's enough to get you to heaven. There is enough grace in heaven to enable you to be everything God intended you to be. All the devils in hell cannot equal the grace and the goodness of God that's available to your life to be what God wants you to be. He is a plus. You have to draw on that. You have to open your life and be willing to receive what God has done in your behalf to make sin, your sins are forgiven if you come to him in his name. Your debt has been paid. There is no balance. It's all done because of the the plus The cross of Jesus in your behalf. 
What has Satan ever done? Nothing. Just a negative. Withdrawal. I think about that in my own life. And uh, I'm not setting myself up up as an example. No way. I mean, this is what I want to be to my children, to my wife. Uh, I, I think for me... I'm kind of pushed, as I said, in a corner and saying to Jesus, uh, you got me on this one uh, because some days in Mary's life I've been a minus instead of a plus. And I look back and I realize that in my children's lives there are times when I was just a minus and not a plus. And I guess we are all there. I don't want to put you in the category with me, but I've just had to say, Lord, you got to help me because I want to be more and more a plus. When I meet someone, when I engage someone, when I, when I talk with someone, wherever it is out there, I don't want them to walk away thinking minus. <laughs> I could do without that. I want it to be a plus. That was a nice man. That man showed me grace. That man showed me love. That man showed me forgiveness. Because this brings us right back to, to where we started, that what God asks of us as Christians is not to memorize the scripture as good as that is. But he asks us to put that scripture in our hearts and then make it live with our lips and our arms and our life, our what we do and what we say and where we go and the way we respond to people. And then our lives become, a, we translate the truth of God. Grace is no, no longer just an idea, a concept about God that God did, but we make grace live because we dispense it. Forgiveness is no longer just about something God did for us on the cross. But we become forgivers because we are forgiven. In fact, the Bible says, until you become a forgiver, you won't be forgiven. For if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. God calls us all to live as a plus. That doesn't de dehumanize us. We, we're not... <laughs> The scriptures says, and I, I'm, I'm going to end with scriptures today. And most time preachers begin with scriptures, but I'm going to, I'm going to scotch this all because there's so many scriptures that I can give you. But I'm going to give you some that really speak to this of living life as a plus. Uh, and he, he enables us only by his grace and his mercy can our lives become a plus instead of a negative. We, 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 we all have our moments when we, we wish we could do it over. Uh, I think about, I think about, I, I have done some things in the name of religion, in the name of Jesus, that were a negative and not a plus. You can take the scripture and try to beat somebody up with it. You all have that. Try to manipulate people. When you take the scripture to try to manipulate people, it's a negative. And I hear too much of that on TV and all using the scripture to, to try to make a point. Using the scripture to try to prove that you're right about something. Using the scripture to try to get somebody to do what you want them to do. To live the way you want them to live. And that's, that's a negative. That's a negative. Are we supposed to share scripture? Yes. We, 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 we are to share the good news. Do you know, some people call... <laughs> I've thought about this numerous times. Some people say, if you preach on hell, that that's the gospel. Did you know hell is not a part of the gospel? 
I got some of your attention. Let me ask you this. What does is, what is the word gospel mean? Say that loud. What does the word gospel mean? It means good news. How can hell be part of that? You answer me. That's not to say that hell is not a real place and doesn't, it, it exists. And the Bible teaches us about hell, but the, hell is a negative. It's a minus. The gospel is good news that God will turn the minus into a plus. And that no matter how much we have sinned or how far away from God we've gone, God will receive us into his family and make us his children. That's the good news. That's the good news that the the plus overcomes the minus. Amen? In all of our lives. And, uh, it, you know, years ago, when I first felt called to preach, I started, tried to start a church and got some help. I'm not going to say too much about this, but uh, we, we called a preacher uh, to try to have a meeting, and he came to speak. And he was an older man, and uh, uh, he, he would... Uh, he would say, and people are going to hell, amen. Do you know what amen means? So be it. <laughs> I, I think about the good news of the gospel. Gospel means good news. So the good news that in a minus world, a negative world, because of what Jesus has done, on the cross and his investment in the church that he can turn negative lives minus lives into positive lives aren't you glad for that and what he asks of us is this simple but profound truth that what he's done in us and changing our lives that that work its way out So that people who never will read the written page are confronted with the reality of the love of God and the goodness of God. It's so important, brothers and sisters. It's not about just going to church. It's about being the church. It's, and I, I was inspired thinking about my dear brother Ray. If anybody ever preached with their life, he preached with their life. If they had allowed the people that he drove to Sunday school and the people that that man touched, church packed with people, not a preacher. He was never pretended to be a preacher. He was a a fisherman and a beekeeper, worked for Uniroyal for 40-something years, and uh, just, just like you or me. But it was incredible how many people, they, they couldn't let people speak, or we'd still be having the service. I'm telling you, because he, they, and everybody would say, when I said, Brother Ray's a plus, man, you get an amen. This man was a plus in my life. He loved me. He cared for me. He reached out to me. And I thought, that's, that's what the Bible needs. That's what the world needs. That we would translate the scripture as people in our everyday life. You don't have to be a preacher or a teacher. You don't have to be some thing. You know, if you just be yourself and allow Allow what God has done for you to find its way out in where you go and what you say, how you act when you get cheated, what you do when you get lied on. How, how, do you know when the plus is most important? When it's most difficult. 
Anybody can be a plus when everything's good and all the news is good. It's, it's easy to be a plus. But when you're down in the valley and life is kind of turned on you, giving you a bad deal, it's not easy. And as a Christian, by the grace of God, you can still be a plus in that difficult. You'll never know how much your life speaks. You'll never know. If God finds you with the plus sign in your heart, I want God to, I want God to give me a heart tattoo with a plus sign. If I could get my heart tattooed, I'd have it tattooed with a plus sign to always remind me every day that God wants us and needs us. This is not to put anybody down. I think you get that. You know what the bottom line of all this is? You really are important. Your life matters. Your life makes a difference. Megan and I talked about in all of that, uh, I guess, 18 hours of driving, something like that. We talk about everything. And I said to her, have you ever thought about how you remember, and, and you do this right now, you, you remember certain moments and things and relationships with people that was nothing to them. They forgot it two days afterwards, but you, you brought it with you all the way to this time in your life. Didn't seem like much to them, but the way you received it, the way it impacted you, you can never forget it. It's like my wife's father told her one time she had an ugly nose, a minus. And, and all the times that I have told her she was pretty, hadn't been able to overcome that minus. And I'm asking God to help me because I can't ask of you anything that I'm not willing to participate in myself. I'm asking God, you, you may see some minuses and pluses put on the walls of our church the next month or so. Just to challenge us all to make the decision in the name of Jesus to, to be a plus in other people's lives. That when they count, encounter us, they're not driven away from God. They're pulled toward God. Could I get an amen? It's, it's really important. Now let me give this scripture. And I, I'm trying to do better on the link thing. There is, a, there, there is some wonderful scriptures. Let me, let me just start right here with the Ephesians, the uh, fourth chapter. 26th verse. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. Some of the translations uses the word over and over, edify one another. It means means be a plus, strengthen, edify. Another word that we would use would be to encourage. The Bible tells us to encourage one another in the Lord. Make deposits. Meg said on our trip uh, one time, she said, she said, Dad, how many times when we're with somebody, we have really positive thoughts about them and we never say it to them? We never say it. We just, we just keep it inside. Like right now, I'm looking at Bendy. Excuse me, Bendy. But I, I have, 
You have been a real blessing watching your life and your commitment to the church. So why wouldn't I say that to you? Does that make you feel like a plus? And I say that in all sincerity. But normally I would never say that. Or, and to our wives and our mates and other people. It, you know, it's, it's the task of the enemy to silence us. Or just make us give minus us. Criticize. Judge. When everything about Jesus says, I love you, you're important, I care about you. If we could just, if we could just have God somehow so instill this in our lives that we go every day with the intent to bless and, and let me let me give you another First Thessalonians five eleven. Uh, which is well, if you if we want to write these down, I won't read them all, but first Thessalonians five eleven, Ephesians four twenty nine, Hebrews ten, twenty four and twenty five, Proverbs twelve, twenty three, first Thessalonians four eighteen, Philippians four eight, Hebrews three thirteen. All of these are saying what I'm preaching. <laughs> the first Thessalonians five eleven is a is a powerful powerful verse. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. So, if you if you want to check out yourself and look up, edify, comfort you find that this is an important principle in the church. That God's people would become plus people who are always trying to bless somebody, encourage somebody, help somebody, strengthen somebody, so that when they leave, they don't go away with a minus, but you leave their presence with a plus. I used to, I don't know if any of you would ever remember, some of you, if you're in Nashville, remember out on Lebanon Road, there was the S-curves. And for years, there was a house on the corner uh, of a, where a street turned, and uh, there was a big sign in the front yard, you know, one of those religious kooks things that said, said uh, Jesus is coming soon. Well, let me tell you who lived in that house. Maud Merritt. She was once a member of Nashville First Church of the Nazarene. Her uh, grandson was a circuit court judge appointed by Reagan, Judge Merritt. He's a saint. In the last three or four years of her life, she was, she was bedridden and People never knew it. People never knew this. I went to her funeral, didn't even have a part in it because her family didn't know. She was my mother's prayer partner. And I would go to see Mother Merritt, not to, Mother Merritt didn't need me. I needed Mother Merritt. And when she was in her 90s and couldn't get out of the house, I'd go and I, I always walked away from there with a big plus sign in my heart. Never once did ever go. And when we started the church and we we're struggling, I was there one day. I never asked her for anything. First she said, I want to be a member of the church. I took her in. She never attended one time. She was a member of the church. And we were building the building there one day. She said, James, I don't have much at all. She had an envelope. And she gave me that envelope that had some coins and a few dollars in it. I put the money in. I still have her money. It was so precious to me. Because if I ever met a saint of God that was a plus, if you were discouraged, you could not leave her house discouraged. If you're down, 
you left her house, you felt up and hopeful because that was her life. And what it really was, it was not about Maud Merritt. We call her Mother Maud Merritt. Catholics would like that. We call her Mother Merritt. And what it was is that I, I have, I wish I'd have thought I'd have brought it and let you see, I have her little devotional thing that was given to me. I don't know how I got it, but I got it. Mother Merritt's whole life that I knew her is a senior, 90-something. She lived over there with her door open. She never locked. They told her she better lock her door. She said, no, I, I can't go to the door. If somebody needs me and they see my sign and people would stop, she, she said, just come on in. Just come on in. She slept with, she, she, she left that door ajar all the time. I'll never be there. But what an example of being a plus as a Christian. I'm challenging you this morning. I don't know how long I'll be on this earth or here. That's all up to God. But my heart's desire for us in this time and this generation of so much negativity and so much pain and so much suffering and you know, we get suckered in on the political thing and that spills over in the spiritual realm. Do I like what's going on politically? No, it's all a rotten mess. But that's when we need some pluses the most, folks. And my prayer is that God will raise up a people here, a family of God, that we are one big plus sign wherever we live, wherever we go, that people will be drawn to Jesus. Because we're the living Bible. And people need to experience the living Bible. Pluses and minuses. It's an important issue. You can encourage. You can be a plus. You can express the heart of Jesus. We thank you this morning, Jesus for your word and we thank you for the power of your spirit that can move our hearts and help us come face to face with truth and right here before my brothers and sisters I ask you to forgive me for the times you have put me in a situation and you wanted me to be a plus and I became a negative I'm sincerely asking you, Lord, forgive me. Sometimes it was with my own children. Sometimes it was with a brother or sister in the church or in the community, a neighbor, a co-worker. And I left them with a minus. Please forgive me, Lord. And I'll tell you, I'm human. I'll probably do it again, but I don't want to. Please help us, Lord, that our lives will become expressions of the good news, the gospel. It's a plus all the way. It's a plus. And we thank you for that today. Lord, you know I love these brothers and sisters, this church, this body. Will you, will you pull us together? Until as a family, collectively, we're a plus in Dixon County. Bless everyone that's been here today. And as they go, I pray that today's service would have been a plus in their life, not a negative. I pray, Lord, that your grace and mercy will go before us. That our hearts will be open to your guidance, to your direction. 
And that we will walk in the joy of the redeemed. Live every day in expectation of your return. Prepared to meet the groom. Bless this service, I pray. And it's truth, not my truth. May it go with us in power and anointing. In Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen.